Hey everyone, Gareth here with Creative Connors. In today's video, I want to answer the skeptical question, why would I use automation? I heard it's complicated, expensive, and sometimes catastrophically difficult. Is it worth it? Yes! No hesitation. Eh, most of the time. There is intrinsic value creatively in automation, and it comes from repeatable motion, which makes it easy to hit the same mark on stage every night. Also, automated machines can be made to move scenery faster than you could say pull a rope, and they can also move bigger stuff than you could reasonably move by hand. By orchestrating many machines together, you can create more intricate and easily adjusted motion in live performances. And last, but absolutely not least, by using the same data networks, you can coordinate the physical movement of the automated scenery with video, lights, and sound. Now, I wanna show you examples of each of these benefits, starting with repeatable motion. This is kind of table stakes. Computers are great at doing the same thing every night in the same way. Repeatability might be the least interesting, but it's not the least important reason to use automation. Here's a clip of some lifts from a concert tour. We worked on this project with all access staging. There were three pairs of stack scissor lifts used on the touring concert stage. The timing of the lifts had to be programmed to match the cadence of the music. Every performance must look the same because each audience member really deserves to see the same show, no matter what night or which city they saw it. Without automation, you'd have to run each of the six scissor lifts with manual valves, but the timing and repeatability wouldn't be guaranteed. So automation is a big help for an effect like this. Moving scenery that is heavy or moving it fast with precision is better done with automation. In this clip, you can see some early prototypes of a custom chain hoist we developed and then built for a kinetic sculpture. The artist wanted to use a large anchor chain to manipulate a life-size marionette. In moments of the performance, the marionette needed to appear to fall, but do so under precise positioning to prevent the head impacting the ground. At those moments, the chain was traveling at a very quick 12 feet per second, or 720 feet per minute, and then at other moments, it needed to creep along at only one inch per second. These combination of precise, dramatic changes would be extremely difficult to do by hand, but with automation, it's no problem. These next two clips were both taken at the Old Globe Theater in San Diego. Here you can see large archways composed of several layers moving effortlessly under automated control. Moving this much mass on stage is possible to do by hand, but it would require a bunch of people and rehearsal time to do it in unison like this. Here, a large revolve is turning a skeletal house in plain view. Not only is this a lot of mass to turn, but there's no masking here to hide stage hands if you tried to spin it by hand. However, there is enough room to stash a motor inside that deck and automate it. For a production of Mamma Mia at the Fifth Avenue Theater in Seattle, we built a six foot by 12 foot lift with a 4,000 pound lifting capacity and a top programmable speed of 18 inches per second. Moving this kind of weight at this speed by hand would be impractical. Hitting marks without computer control, also impractical. Mechanized scenic choreography is where this starts to get real fun. Beyond hitting marks and lugging heavy stuff, using automation unlocks the ability to perform intricate motion that would demand a lot of rehearsal and many stagehands otherwise. Giving the scenic designer motion as an artistic tool is really powerful. And sometimes, eh, it just looks really cool. For Theater Calgary, we built machines to track and rotate multi-sided scenery. The motion of those panels was coordinated with a lift to create a whooshing transition as Scrooge was whisked away by his visiting ghosts. What a great effect. At South Coast Repertory Theater, they created this beautiful scene change with two pallets, a turtle, and a wagon. This intricate motion with a satisfying finish is all coordinated through SpikeMark software and stagehand controllers. It's shockingly easy to program 
but still beautiful to watch. I really love this one. Working again with the good folks at All Access, we modified five JLG personnel lifts for a kinetic sculpture. The sculpture was installed on a beach to emphasize the effects of climate change and subsequent rising tides. The lifts were programmed to move in the cyclical motion of a lunar clockwork. The longest complete cycle of the slowest lift took hours to complete, but when it did, all the lifts would arrive at the same level, just like a clock mechanism. Now, could you imagine trying to do that timing by hand? For the singing contest TV show, Singing China, four judges are hidden from view of the performer during the blind audition. When a judge wants to claim the singer for their team, they smash a button and the LED screen obstructing their view raises and their chair is whisked down a ramp with a high speed winch. There's some big safety concerns in this effect. First, the chair must stop if the LED screen fails to raise out of harm's way. We don't want to face plant the judge into the wall. And also, the LED screen must be prevented from coming down in a guillotine fashion if the chair is underneath the screen. And to top it all off, the motion is triggered by the judges themselves, not an automation operator. So the timing is totally unpredictable. This is a perfect job for automation. Ratcheting up to the next level means bridging the hard physical world of scenery and the softer, squishier realm of lights and projection. Since all these effects run on the same data network, we can coordinate motion, lighting, and projection based on the position of the scenery. This is a simple shop test showing a video image pinned to moving scenery. As simple as this is, realize that there's no tricks or reliance on timing here. It's just the position data from the motor being fed to the projection system to move the image and keep it displayed on the scenic wall. This clip from the Geffen Playhouse is subtle, but elegant and polished. As the curtain moves, no light from the front projection leaks onto the drape. The mask of the video is moving in sync with the motion of the curtain. Now, would you have to automate this? Eh, probably not. But if you already have the tools in your arsenal, it's a great way to level up the production value. Another example from the Geffen, where the video image from the projector stays pinned onto the moving scenery. And at the end of the move, a trigger can be sent to the lighting system to finish the transition. This is another subtle but effective use of tying the lighting projection and automation systems together over the same network. These last two clips show the same technique of mapping video onto moving scenery, but here, with multiple rotating elements, the effect is magnified. These periactos have a prismatic effect and look almost hollow at times. Very cool. Here, a revolve and donut are used to reveal a new car model. Between the motion in the video, the movement in the wall, and the counter-rotation of the car, you really get drawn into the excitement. Such a great effect. Okay, let's wrap it up. The examples today span from those simple but important use of automation to ensure the consistency in the performance night after night to the artistic integration of motion and projection. They show that automation is just one more tool we can use to tell a story in live performance. Hopefully these examples inspire some curiosity about how to implement automation on your next show. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.